welcome to another Scene World unboxing. This is a new parcel that has arrived today, the 4th of June, and it's from Funstock, who have a range of gaming and retro merchandise, and this is a new piece of hardware. So if you've followed retro gaming for a while, you're probably aware of Blaze, a company that created gaming merchandise and has since moved into gaming hardware. This has included licensed consoles and handhelds based on Atari games and an Android tab. So now we are unboxing the new Evercade. This is the limited edition premium pack, which comes with free game cartridges. And at the time of launch, there are a total of 10 different cartridges. Funstock, as a pre-order bonus, had a limited edition Evercade gold coin with the console on the back and player one on the front. So that's a nice little addition for those of us that pre-ordered. So if you haven't heard of the Evercade console yet, let me explain a bit about the philosophy behind it. It's a portable console with the option of attaching to a TV through an HDMI cable. It's officially licensed. The premium pack here includes Atari Collection 1, Interplay Collection 1 and Namco Museum Collection 1. So it has a 4.3 inch screen which is the same size as the Sony PSP, dual speakers, D-pad, four face buttons, two trigger buttons on the top. It has volume buttons here and a headphone socket there. And again, there's more information there. So there's 20 games on the Atari pack, six games on Interplay and 11 on Namco Museum. And again, it tells you about the other cartridges available here. Battery life is four to five hours on a full charge. And the main thing with this system is that instead of being a digital download or a small SD card based console, all the games for the Evercade will come on or certainly the Evercade handheld so far, will come on licensed cartridges. Now some people have asked, why make it like that when you can get, say, a cheap Android gaming device for emulation and download thousands of ROMs? Well, I do agree with several opinions I've seen that said the problem with having thousands of ROMs available is you don't know what to play. You might go back and play an old favourite. You might go back and try something new you've never had the chance to play before. I just managed to knock them on the floor there. Um, but the reality is you would never play everything. So I'm just going to arrange these in number order because that's bugging me that they're out of the number order here. So we've got seven. At the uh, original launch, there were nine cartridges. The tenth cartridge here was announced and available to pre-order at the same time. So we have 
Data East Collection 1, Atari Collection 2, Namco Collection 2, Interplay 2. These two are really interesting. The Mega Cap Studios and Pico Interactive are indie publishers making and publishing new games or releasing games that are previously unreleased on old hardware, so the Snares and Mega Drive. And finally, Technos Collection 1, which was added for pre order. Uh, currently, there are three more cartridges planned later this year. Two of those are Atari Lynx, which all suits the handheld format really well. And the other cartridge, excuse me, is a combination of two recent Mega Drive games, Tanglewood and Xeno Crisis. So there we have the interior box ready to play again. That's quite smart in itself. As you can see on the back there, Blaze's address. And it was made in China and shipped over and obviously the current crisis, coronavirus crisis at the time of Dispatch has delayed release from April back into May and then became a launch window rather than a launch day. Quick start guide shows you how to power on off and the various components, how to play games, pause, exit. There are save states so you can load a previously, you know, load back a game, save, save position, how do you play games on TV. You can play when it's on charge. The it comes with a USB charging cable, but not uh, an adapter. You can change the menu language. There are options to change the screen settings, safety notices, so that that's in several languages there. And then here is the actual machine itself. So as you can see this is the black limited edition exclusively available through Funstock and you'll see it apes a modern console with the layout, the diamond layout the part there on the front is the volume buttons, headphone buttons, the power cable on the top there HDMI out, power switch, you've got your bumpers like the classic snares and the back is the cartridge slot. So also in this premium edition we have three cartridges. So for cartridge number one, Atari Collection 1, cartridge number two, Namco Collection 1 and cartridge number four Now there is no mini HDMI cable in the box and there have been a few issues with pre-release versions where there was talk about uh, sound issues when playing over either an HDMI TV or when trying to capture s sound and gameplay from the device. Now. Blaze have made a statement on this saying that it's only with a minority of games, so it's currently about 14, less than 10% of the games announced and are available. Um, there are options to update the uh, console firmware and they have made the first of those available the um, main reason for that patch is to offer a chance to reconfigure the buttons because some people complained that the buttons were in a different layout and the games used different buttons. So in a modern layout, A would become B and B would become A compared to the snares or the snares. So there are... There is a patch that will put it back to how they originally, but then the menus will be referring to the original buttons. So it could be confusing. Um, I personally don't see that could be in much of an issue because you're learning and playing on a new console. You're going to be 
learning how to play it on there. Anyway, so let's have a look at the cartridges. Atari Collection 1, multi-game cartridge, rated 12. 20 games included on this. I'm going to have to hold this closer so I can see it. So we have Centipede, Adventure, Alien Brigade from 7800, Asteroids, Missile Command, Crystal Castles, Food Fight, Desert Falcon, Motorcycle, Canyon Bomber, Gravitar, Double Dunk, Ninja Golf, another 7800 game, Steeplechase, Night Driver, Tempest, Video Pinball, Aquaventure, Yars Return, and Sword Quest. So, an interesting mix of 2600 and 7800 games. And if you've seen my recent video on the Atari Visual Compendium, you'll have heard one or two familiar names there. So next we'll go on to Cartridge 2, Namco Museum Collection. And it says here there are 11 games included. So some of these will be 8-bit, some will be 16-bit. And there are some familiar arcade names on these collections. But in each case, these will be 8 and 16-bit conversions, not the original arcade games. The emulation in this is all about 8 and 16-bit. And in time, they're hoping to add arcade support. So we have Galaxian, Pac-Man, Xavius, Mappy, Dig Dug, Star Luster, Battle Cars, Metal Marines, Libble Rabble, Quad Challenge, and Mappy Kids. Now, Mappy Kids is interesting because it hasn't been released in the West before. So that's another interesting reason to own this cart. And obviously, Pac-Man himself celebrating 40 years this year. So then we have Interplay Collection 1. Just six games on this, mainly because they're larger 16-bit games. So we have Clay Fighter, Earthworm Jim, Battle Chess, Boogerman, a pick and flick adventure, Incantation, and Titan. It's a very interesting selection of games on those cartridges. Let's have a look at the larger range. Go through these one at a time. So we have Data East, 10 games included. And again, these are arcade. Some of these are arcade titles, but they're not the arcade version. You have to remember these are home conversions. So Bad Dudes, known as Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja in some territories. Burger Time, Midnight Resistance. This is the Mega Drive. Midnight Resistance, Side Pocket, Karate Champ, Joe and Mac 2. Again, this is another one that's not been widely available. Fighters History, Two Crew Dudes, Magical Drop 2, Burning Rubber. So quite another another varied selection there. Atari Collection 2, another multi-game card, 20 titles on here. So we have Basketball, Yars Revenge, Solaris, Centipede, Asteroids, Demons to Diamonds, Desert Falcon 7800, Haunted House, Sprint Master, Radar Lock, Millipede, Submarine Commander, Planet Smashers, Real Sports Tennis, Wizard, Air Sea Battle, Bowling, Street Racer, Dark Chambers, and Human Cannonball. Have a second Namco Museum Collection. 11 games on there, which includes Pack Attack, personal favourite of mine, on the snares, Gallagher, Walkman, one, another one that's not perhaps as well known, Dig Dug 2, The Tower of Druaga, a very important game in Japan, perhaps less well known overseas, Burning Force, Felios, Weapon Lord, Dragon Spirit, The New Legend, Splathouse Part 2 and Splathouse 3, so that one has a higher age rating because obviously the Splathouse games are horror based. Interplay Collection 2. So we have Claymates, Earthworm Jim 2, Clay Fighter 2, Prehistoric Man, Rad Gravity, and The Brains. Mega Cat Studio. So this is one of the more interesting ones because these are. Indie games. So we've got 10 more games on this cartridge. So we have Coffee Crisis, Old Towers and Retro Souls, which of course we've recently been able to play on the Commodore 64. Tanza, Little Medusa, Super Painter, Multitude, 
Almost Hero, Creepy Brawlers, Justice Duel, Duel and Logjammers. We have the Pico Interactive cartridge. We have 20 games on, which is another fantastic uh, collection here. So we have Switchblade, which is an enhanced SNES version of the Tarot ST game. Dragon View, Top Racer, Power Punch 2, Brave Battle Saga, Eight Eyes, Nightshade, Radical Rex, The Humans, Dork and Yimpy, Magic Girl, Water Margin, Iron Commando, Draken, Tin Head, The Immortal, Power Pigs of the Dark Age, Canon Legend of the New Gods, Conversion of Where the Exploding Fist, and Jim Power, The Lost Dungeons. And then finally of the announced and released cartridges, it's Technos Collection 1, 8 games included. So we have the NES conversion of Double Dragon and Double Dragon 2 The Revenge, River City Ransom, which is the Kunio Kun original game, Dodgeball, Super Double Dragon, there's an interesting feature on that recently in Retro Gamer, Super Spike Volleyball, Renegade, which followed on from Kunio Kun, and Crash and the Boys Street Challenge. So there's are the cartridges. And let's try and boot up to see what it's like. So if you've uh, if you're new to the Scene World channel, then uh, we cover all aspects of gaming, primarily from a Commodore 64 and Commodore perspective. We do news, reviews, boxing, unboxing videos, interviews and more. So here is Atari Collection 1 and one of the joys of the FK design is that each cartridge collection comes with a printed manual telling you more about the game and the controls. So as you can see we have Centipede, Ninja Golf, Video Pinball and Aquaventure, Canyon Bomber, Crystal Castles, which is the 2600 version as you can see there, Alien Brigade, and a very interesting game based on Operation Wolf, the classic 2600 Asteroids, Desert Falcon, Double Dunk, Food Fight, Gravitar, based on the arcade game which used vector graphics, obviously difficult for the 2600 to do vectors, but fun nevertheless. Missile Command, Motor Psycho, another later 7800 game, Night Driver, Steeplechase, Sword Quest, the Atari 2600 version of Tempest, the classic Warren Robinette game Adventure, and Yars Return, follow up to Yars Revenge. So you see each game also has little extras on the version release, developer, publisher, and so on. So there's a list in the back there of more collections available and an interesting little artwork there of someone playing the Evercade. So the games come on cartridge, great label on the back, and they're designed to slot into the back of the machine. Nice tight fit, and as you can see, the way they're labelled, you have the name on the back. So we'll hit power on and see what happens. So we have Blaze Entertainment. Evercade Startup. So hopefully you can see the screen. Okay, so then we can page through the menu, so you get a little picture of the box art there, which is nice, and the name and description, so we'll have a look through, Centipede, there's the 2600 version of Desert Falcon, the 7800 version is on the other cartridge, I'm looking forward to playing that one, so Command, Motor Psycho, Night Driver, Ninja Golf, Steeplechase, Sword Quest, and Sword Quest infamously had a competition running inside the manual. Tempest, Video Pinball, Yars Return. So let's have a look at 
Alien Brigade, press select and the game starts. Sound quality is pretty good. You press the button there to skip. And now you can change difficulty level there on the touch screen here. So A to start. And now the interesting thing about this is you're taking on aliens and enemies. I appear to press the wrong button there. Start or pause. And I'll select or go back to the menu there. So this is a good example of why you should read the manual. So we'll go into the game. And we'll bring up the in-game menu. I quite like the font at the top in-game menu, which is in blocky pixelized. And so you can go to save slot. Put it in a save slot. Don't have any on the cartridge. Save state, load state, settings. So we'll go into settings and see what we go. So we've got screen ratio, original size, full screen. And go there, we've changed it to full screen, which does stretch the display to the full width. So I'm going to put it back. I think to personally it looks better. So the interesting thing about this game is that there are aliens as well as... Oop, I pressed the wrong button there and restarted the level. <laughs> there are aliens as well as human enemies in this. So you work out who's which. So you've got hot ball style grenades. Don't shoot the guy with the hands behind his head. So that gives you a look at the game. So we'll do a menu and quick game to go back to the menu. So there we go. We've got a battery indicator top right. I don't know if we get any, do we get any volume indicators? No. You get a blip sound as you move through the menu. So let's go select a play. So Atari Inc. And then in the game, select select your mode obviously in the Atari that will give you different game modes I've forgotten how many there were in Asteroids which affects all sorts of settings the 2600 version of Asteroids obviously as I said earlier 2600 not designed to do vector graphics. So we have these lovely chunky rocks. And the UFO, sorry, I'm going to drop the screen a bit there so you can see it. So let's quick look at that game. So I think we'll look at one more game for this video. And we'll take a quick look at Ninja Golf. After many long years of ninja training, you are finally ready for the most difficult test of all. Nine holes of ninja golf. Oh. <laughs> so I did it again. Press the wrong button. Must avoid pressing the X button here on the Atari collection because that seems to reset you back to the menus. So we hit the ball and I didn't hit it very far there. So, 
Button B throws a shuriken, button A jumps, and duck and shoot. Run out of sure again, now I've got some more there. So obviously, yeah. Uh... So that's a lot of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Evercade. From this brief play, it looks like a lot of fun. And as you can see, I've got a lot of games to be working my way through. And as I mentioned earlier in the uh, video, there are already three more cartridges announced to be released in the third quarter of 2020. And the company has already said there will be a series of new cartridges. And the most important thing is these are fully licensed, fully legitimate. They're not ROMs you download from a dodgy website. It's all about the authentic handheld gaming experience. And as I said, those three extra cartridges will be uh, two versions, two cartridges containing Atari Lynx titles, which is something I'm looking forward to as I've never owned an Atari Lynx, and a special cartridge containing two recent indie Mega Drive developments, that's Xeno Crisis, which is a an overhead Operation Wolf, apologies, is an overhead Smash TV style game. And uh, Tanglewood, the very impressive platform game. So that's the Evercade. Just arrived today. You're seeing it unboxed as I unbox it. Keep watching the Scene World channel for more unboxing videos, news, reviews and fascinating interviews across gaming and computing history. Quick little epilogue to the video. I dropped something on the floor earlier and it was this. This is the official Evercade carrying case which came with the limited edition. So the idea is the front pocket is designed to hold your cartridges. The main pocket is designed to hold the console. So that's a nice little extra with a lovely little leather Evercade section on there. So that's, that's part of the pre-order package and will be available separately. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And keep retro gaming.